friends. Well, good morning for me because it's 8.40 in the morning. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is for you. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and I want to very, very warmly welcome to episode 53 of the Making Stories podcast. I'm Hannah Lisa, um, the host for today and always. And here at Making Stories, we're all about knitting sustainably. So um, that's what we do. We carry a selection of sustainably produced yarns and notions and publish a magazine twice a year with a collection of knitwear patterns um, that are hopefully going to enter your wardrobe and stay there a long, long time. And I am super happy this morning because if you've been following this podcast for a little while, you know that I used to have my little podcast corner nook in um, a corner of our bedroom. And then a few months ago, we got a bed. Um, we were sleeping on a mattress on the floor before because uh, baby and then toddler. So um, we got a bed, the podcast corner, uh, had to leave and I've been recording um, in our living room ever since but I wasn't quite happy with the setting I felt it was too busy and there were some lighting issues um, and then coincidentally I needed to record this video today because it needs to go live today because there's a shop update happening today which I'm gonna talk all about and um, but also today, we are having uh, friends over for a barbecue. So my wonderful husband is making pulled pork on our barbecue right next to where I usually record. So it's like, okay, that recording spot is out of the question because he needs to go and check on it and stuff. And yeah, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then I looked around and I was like, there's a different corner of the bedroom that I think would work really well for podcasting. I wonder if I can fit my podcasting chair into it and one of my favorite plans. And I think it's perfect. I think, I think it's great. Like, I love it. There's like a space where I can put all of the things that I want to show you. There's the plan. So there's like some green, which I love. It's not too busy. Hopefully it feels cozy. So yeah, let me know what you think about this. I am quite in love with it. Today's episode, oh, before we dive into today's episode, I actually can't recall whether I talked about this the last time or not, but we are on a summer schedule with this podcast, which by the way is about knitting. I haven't said that earlier, I'm sorry. It's like, okay, clearly a little bit out of practice, which ties in with the summer schedule. So instead of an episode every other week, um, we're only doing an episode every four weeks. So there was an episode four weeks ago, there's an episode now, and there will be, so we're mid-July now, and there will be an episode um, mid, uh, mid-August. Um, the reason for that is that A, there's summer vacation, but then also B, um, summer holidays uh, and, and the summertime in general um, are a little, sorry, I'm just like really annoyed right now because my husband's alarm has been going for like the past three minutes. I don't know if you can hear it. There. I'm just gonna quickly run and ask him to switch it off. Sorry, where was I? Summer schedule. Um, so, um, so yeah. So instead of every other week, I'm doing an episode, uh, sort of one episode in June, one in July, one in August. Uh, from the start of September onwards, we're back to an episode every other week. Um, one of the reasons um, that I did this is also because I realized that viewing numbers in the summer are going down, which to me, I completely get that. Like, I'm not watching as many podcasts in the summer either because I'm just out, like, at the lake or on the balcony, like, you know, like, and 
I am kind of assuming because this is not just something that happened this year, like it happens every year that in the summer there is like less people viewing our YouTube videos, um, that this is also a thing that happens to you. So yeah, um, I hope you don't mind me going on the summer schedule. Um, today's episode um, is a little bit about knitting because I have a new finished object. But there's also going to be a really big section about the shop because I haven't recorded two weeks ago. There is lots of news about the shop that I want you to know about. Um, if that's not your jam, stay for the beginning because I'll start with, um, with my knitting and, and then I'll move into all of the shop things. But I hear that some of you actually really do quite enjoy that. Um, and I have brought lots of goodies and what, and like there's, going to be there's something really exciting there so you might want to stick around but let's start with the knitting um I finished my violet tea so the last podcast episode I was like I for sure am going to finish this before the next one and I did I haven't worn it yet because I wanted to show you uh, also it's been a tiny little bit too warm uh, but I'm gonna get up so that you can see the tea. And it's full. Glory. So it has this cute, um, cute lace pattern at the bottom. It's quite cropped. So I'm wearing it with like high-waisted culottes. Um, the, and as always, I'm doing like a longer recap about this project. So the Violet Tea is a pattern by Jessica McDonald. Jessica is a fantastic designer based in the US, very much um, sort of, we very much share, share the same values around sustainability and, um, you know, ethical, ethical business behavior. Um, and I am so, so glad that, you know, she reached out at the beginning of the year to ask whether we uh, wanted to figure out um, a pattern collaboration and we did one for her winterwood sweater which was a colorwork sweater designed for manchelopis and then we wanted to do something for the summer and she had this super sweet summer t-shirt in the works and I was like this is perfect and this would be perfect for one of the summer yarns that we have this year wool dreamers sauna um so that's what we did and that was by far our most popular kit to date i think we sold like 60 kits or so uh, and i'm super happy and i hope to see like many more of these pop up because i think it's a great pattern and it fits beautifully with the yarn um it's a drop shoulder tee so you can see this here there's the drop shoulder with short sleeves um, quite cropped, uh, round neckline, um, and as I said, the, the little lace, um, sweet, sweet lace at the, at the bottom before you start the hem. Um, I loved knitting every single stitch of this, so I didn't do any modifications at all. Um, it's a sweet construction where you cast on the back first, um, knit down to the armhole and then you knit the front on one side and on the other side join them knit down to the armhole again and then you start knitting in the round um, stockinette soothing stockinette perfect tv knitting or picnic knitting or lake knitting and then you get to the lace um, which is a really sweet repeat that's really intuitive and you work the lace chart three times and then the ribbing for the hem. Um, and then there's um, the majority of the work already done. You pick up stitches around the armhole um, and knit like a few centimeters of sleeve and then the ribbing and same on the other side. And then the neckline, which is just the ribbing and it's done. What I particularly like about the tee is the way that the neckline is lying flat. Like there's just really good stuff happening here with the shaping. It's a really nice, um, I think it's a really, really nice form of the neck, neck, neckline, shape of the neckline. I also particularly like that there's positive ease happening here, but it is still quite fitted in the bust. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't fall off anywhere, which is nice. 
I made a size size two, but at a different gauge than the pattern calls for. So my finished um, my finished measurements for this T-shirt are more uh, like a size four, um, and I'm a hundred centimeter bust circumference. Just so just so you know. So yeah, so I really, really liked it. Um, it's a really sweet, very well written pattern. I can only highly recommend it. Um, you can get it through Jessica's Ravelry store or on her website and I put the links in the down bar below. The yarn that I used for this is Wool Dreamers Sauna, which is a yarn that we added to our portfolio this summer. It's a 50% cotton, 50% wool blend. And <laughs> if you've been following this podcast, you've been and you've heard me gush about this yarn for quite some time now because I really do love it. Um, I am or was quite hesitant to add a cotton yarn or cotton blend to our lineup because cotton in terms of sustainability, um, also organic cotton, is really difficult because it requires a lot, a lot, a lot of water to be grown. Um, and so that's not really something that you can do anything against, right? Like other than like maybe um, trying to go for cotton varieties that use a little bit less water or need a little bit less water, but it's not a variable that you can easily impact when you're growing cotton. So it was important to me that if we were to add a cotton yarn, all of the other aspects of sustainability, especially things like transport emissions, where is it grown, you know, how far does it travel for processing, all of those things were done as sustainably as possible. And that's the case with this yarn. So the cotton that is in this yarn is um, grown in Spain, as is the wool. The wool is a blend of manchega wool, which is from the sheep that make the manchego cheese. Um, and merino um, and all three fibers that are in this in this yarn so the manchiga wool the merino wool and the cotton are grown in Spain and processed there as well so um, that made me feel comfortable carrying this yarn it comes in seven it comes in seven lovely ooh, camera uh, it comes in seven lovely colors. Uh, the one that I chose, I'm going to get a little bit closer so you can see, um, is called 1985. And it's this beautiful heathered, um, heathered blue with tiny flecks of white and darker blue. Um, it's really gorgeous. I really like all of the colors that they have. They are very summery. So there was like lots of light neutrals and there's a light green and a light blue and um, this is one of the darker colors so yeah lots of variety there we do have i think every color in stock um so in case you want to get like you want to make a violet tea you certainly can um i used four like three and a half skeins so you need four skeins for the size that i made um yeah, uh, if you, you know, if you need help with yarn quantities, things like that, just just send us an email and we'll more, we'll more than happily help you. Um, yeah, that's my violet tea. I don't think there's anything else to say about this. Which means that we're, I'm looking at, I'm looking at my, my notes um, because, I mean, I always, I always write up notes, um, but um, yeah, uh, th this time particularly because the shop news section is rather long. Okay, so um, we are going to talk about, just so that you have, you have a little overview, um, we're going to very quickly talk about issue 10, then we're going to talk about the winter celebration boxes, the post show update with a little recap of how wedding wool weekend um went the shop that i vended at exhibited at this past weekend um we'll also talk about and that's the last thing our new sock box concept because that is launching um uh, before the next podcast episode so i want you to know all about it what we're going to start with though, and we're not going to talk about this long because there will be more, excuse me, I just need to um, ensure that my screen doesn't go into sleep mode because I like seeing myself when I record. Um, 
So uh, we're not going to talk long about issue 10 because there will be another podcast episode coming up with all of the things issue 10 and then there will be a separate video with all of the samples and all of the yarns that we'll have for the issue 10 release. But the reason that I want to talk about issue 10 today is because it's back from the printer and it looks fabulous, if I may say so. I can't get over how cute my mom looks. So issue 10 has the theme heirloom and our wonderful photographer Melinda suggested that my mother and I model, which I absolutely loved. I was terrified, but I also loved it. Um, and my mother was completely down for it. She was like, yes, absolutely, we'll do it. It was such a sweet photo shoot and such great memories. And I mean, she just sparkles. She's the joy in person, I think, on, on those pictures and it's also just really great um, being able to do this and showcase the like showcase the samples on her body and, and my body they're not terribly different but slightly uh, just in terms of just in terms of the shape um, yeah uh, and I love it um, you voted for the color. We did that for the first time ever that we made like a, a, a cover vote and, and I adore this. I think it's just such a, it makes me happy every time that I look at it. Anyhow, issue 10 is available for pre-order now. So if you wanna get your copy, um, like secure your print copy, which I do recommend you do because last time for issue nine, we sold out, like we sold the last two copies on the morning of the release date. Everything else went to subscribers, pre-orders and stockists. And so if you wanna make sure to get our fall issue, I would recommend to pre-order. Um, you also get the magazine a teeny tiny bit earlier because uh, we're shipping it out to you in the week of August 22nd. If you um, are a subscriber, you'll get it even a little bit earlier because we're shipping the subscription copies out mid-August. Um, and if you subscribe until July 31st, you also get access, early access to the yarns that we're launching for issue 10. So if you've been thinking about a subscription, um, you've been kind of on the fence, now is a really good time. Um, like do it before July 31st, because on August 1st, we're, we're pre-launching the yarns for issue 10 to the subscribers, so yeah. But if you are like, okay, no, I'm not sure if I want to have the subscription, then you can now pre-order issue 10. Um, so that's, that is that. Then I want to talk about wedding wool weekend. And it was funny, I um, had a wonderful conversation with a yarn, yarn shop owner uh, over in Canada who I've become friends with yesterday evening. And she was like, what kind of name is that? Is that like a wedding fair? And I was like, oh, no, no, it never occurred to me that, yeah, I mean, wedding is like wedding. Um, so Wedding Wool Weekend is a local to me mini market slash mini yarn festival uh, put on by uh, my local yarn shop, Wall in Berlin. And Wedding is the area of Berlin that the shop is located in. So that's why it's called Wedding Wool Weekend. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with marriage or getting married or anything like that. Um, it was the second time that this mini festival happened. Um, last year, uh, I was invited to exhibit, but I couldn't go because we were on honeymoon, which I think was an excellent, <laughs> was an excellent sort of priority to set. Uh, but so I was really curious and, and honestly, like also really nervous because it was the first time ever that we as Making Stories um, and I like were exhibiting at a show um, with like all of the yarns. Like we did Nottingham when we had our first book, so like six years ago, but nothing ever since. Like I've only ever been booth help uh, for Johnny at Unravel since. So I kind of like, I knew that I could handle like all of the conversations and you know, the like the checkout thing with the card reader and stuff and, and all of that. But like, 
I never organized all of the logistics around it. Like how much, how many products do we need? Do we need shelves? What kind of accessories do we need? Like, do we need little bowls? How do we display our prices? All, all of those things. Um, and it was really nice to organize all of this. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy because like I didn't leave everything to the last minute, but I kind of worked steadily on it over the last few months. And so while it was an intense weekend, it was also one that I very much enjoyed. Um, I had wonderful help. My dear, dear friend Jule from Wool and Twine came over from Hamburg to um, share the booth with me and uh, help me with everything. And that was just amazing. So it's just great that, you know, um, we were able to do this together and, and do, yeah, um, just, just share this experience. Um, and it, did not hurt to have a second pair of hands. Like Eula was an absolute rock star. She just like carried all of the boxes and built the IKEA shelves and all, and all of that. Like it was fantastic. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Eula. You're wonderful. It was such a great weekend. Like it was, it was like a really nice. It was a really nice atmosphere. Um, so it was in this apartment-like uh, event space. We were, I think, like maybe 10 or 12 vendors. Um, and it was really like very well curated by Huta from Wallen and her team. Um, really, like I loved getting to know all of the other exhibitors. Some of them I knew, others like not in person, others not at all. And it was just really cool. And I also really liked that she sort of created an atmosphere where I'm assuming that everyone who came and visited was just, you know, like treated to a really good, just a really fun day or afternoon or a weekend because it was not only the, you know, um, the exhibitors who were bent, like who were offering yarns and things, but it was also like there were lots of benches and tables where people could sit and knit. There was a sourdough pizza truck. The really great cafe in the same building was there and had coffee and cake and stuff. So it was just it was it was wonderful. And I really 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 hope that it's happening again next year and we'll definitely exhibit if it does. Um. So yeah. Um. We, so Yula and I, um, uh, when we talked about the festival, we knew that we wanted to have notions there and lots of Yula's beautiful yarns. And I am going to show you all of the things that are new to the shop um, after this, like for the post wedding wool weekend shop update. The notions. Uh, so we have bubbles and berry stitch markers, Katie Green tea towels, a couple of other things. Um, all of the new ones they sold. Um, so I'm not going to be able to show you any of those, but I'm hoping to get them back in stock. Uh, but we still have some, not all of Eula's yarns, and we have some, like a very selected handful of bags from Harriet from Wildwood Stitches still. So I'm going to. I'm going to show you all of those. You can shop them um, now in the shop. So the shop update is live by the time that this episode goes live. We are going to start with um, mini skein sets and a base that is really quite dear to my heart, but also quite, um, let's say, not as easy to get or it's going to be not as easy to get anymore because Eula is putting it or has put it on hiatus. Um, I'm talking about Woolen Twine's Corydale sock, which is 100% Corydale yarn, um, a fingering weight spun with a high twist that's perfect for socks because it has great stitch definition and holds up incredibly well. Um, it doesn't, it's on superwash like all our yarns, it doesn't have any nylon added to it. But the Corydale itself is a really good fiber for socks and um, the high twist also adds to the durability of the sock yarn. Um, so that um, that is something that we uh, sort of focused on in, uh, in our selection. And Eula prepared three mini skein sets that are just absolutely gorgeous. 
So the first one is called Popsicle and it's this really cute bundle of yeah, ice cream joy essentially. I think it's the perfect it's the perfect name. So you have like a light gray, a light a light yellow, a light pink, a peach, a darker pink and a green. And especially the greens, I mean Yule Yule only uses natural dyes for her yarns and greens like a green like this is not as easy to get. So I'm super happy that she made this she made this work. Um, this little yarn bouquet has six mini skeins. There are 20 grams each, so you get 120 grams of yarn um, at 400 meters, sort of per 100 grams. So it's a classic fingering weight. So these would be great for um, uh, for contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes, or stripy socks, or I'm gonna put like a pattern suggestion as well in the down bar below, which is Vanessa Pelisa's Rufus shawl, which is a lovely shawl that uses one fingering weight, 100 gram skein as the main color, and then like a little mini skein set like this as the contrasting colors. And it's, it's a beautiful shawl, so yeah. So in terms of mini skein sets, we have Popsicle, we have Nostalgia, so this was the most popular. Of this, we only have, have like a couple left. Um, and we have a Daisy, which is one that has a slightly variegated mini in it as well. The others are all, uh, are all tonals. So those are all the three, Popsicle, Nostalgia, Daisy, and they're perfect and I love them. Maybe I need to snatch one for myself. I really want to make that shawl. I'm thinking like this maybe or that or that. I don't know yet. We'll see. Maybe this. This will be nice. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> I digress. We also have the same base on 100 gram skeins. So 400 meters of sock yarn, again, 100% corrugated sock, um, naturally dyed by Eula. We have one variegated colorway called Harbor Front, which is a creamy white and then lilac and specks of green. I think it's just delightful. We have what I think is the perfect neutral Ivory, it's this tall, taupey beige, and sage, which is this gray green of my dreams. And they go quite nicely with the mini skin sets. So, for example, this is Daisy and harbor front or sage and daisy. You could also do popsicle and ivory or nostalgia and ivory. You can also do, if you're a bit more adventurous, Nostalgia and Sage, like they just go really well together. So, um, so yeah, um, we don't have a lot left of them. So there's only two skeins of this and then a handful of the two others. Um, so yeah, so if you like them, I would move rather, rather fast. Uh, we had two more cutaways that Eula dyed, um, but they, they completely sold out. Um, we also had one of Eula's custom spun bases uh, in four beautiful undyed shades. So Eula is a fantastic natural dyer, but she's also super knowledgeable when it comes to creating and curating interesting limited edition custom spins. So she has quite a lot of um, like different yarns that are available in only limited quantities. Sorry, my laptop is like going to sleep mode again. Um, 
And one of them, um, we also kept, like we also took to the festival. Now we hadn't planned on doing like putting this into the shop update, but when we when we took everything down, we had actually not thought about how the yarn gets back to you. Like she shipped everything, and there was like, of course I'm gonna ship everything back to you. And then we looked at each other and we're like, okay. I can just put the Shetland Romney that we have in the shop update as well. Now, like these yards that I'm gonna show you now, they will only be available until the end of Thursday, July 20th, because everything that I don't ship, uh, that, that we don't sell until then, I'm shipping back to Eula. The Corydale, that's ours, like uh, that's that stays. But, um, but the Shetland Romney, you have to move before the end of Thursday, before the end of July 20th. Now, Shetland and Romney are two of my very, very favorite sheep breeds. Um, they're just, they're delightful. Like they're woolly, but not too rustic and blended together. They just create this incredibly, almost like shiny, but very lightweight blooming yarn. This is a fingering weight version that um, knits up at a lot of different gauges and you can also hold double. I'm going to show you two samples in a second. Um, and it is just really, it's just really, really amazing yarn. Um, the, the, um, completely, <laughs> completely lost my train of thought there. Um, the reason uh, also Eula went for it, this particular fiber blend, 50 per, like 50% Shetland, 50% Romney, is because, um, because she was able to cur curate a palette of, I think, four or five different colors. I think there's one more that we don't have here. Um, just by sort of using different colored fleeces. And that's just really, really rare. So... I think it's fascinating. I mean, sheeps, like we humans do, right, come in all forms, shapes, colors, and, and this just showcases the beauty of that so, so well. Um, it's between a fingering and a sport weight, 350 meters to 100 grams, and it's wool on spun. Um, so it, like, it blooms beautifully. It works great for anything from like a hat to a shawl to garments. And uh, Yuda says it's even great for socks, so I haven't tried that, but um, I could definitely see that. So yeah, we have four different colors. So this is the light gray. Then we have a medium gray. You see they all, they're slightly heathered, right? Like they're beautifully heathered. We have light beige. And we have gray brown. So let me show you the four together. So here we have the warmer shades, light beige and gray brown. And here are the slightly colder shades, light gray and medium gray. And you can see, so you can see the difference. They're, they're, they are amazing. I want to show you how they knit up. Let me just quickly put the yarn back. Yule um, very kindly left me two of her samples here. Um, so the sample that she made for the show is the Stay Soft Shawl um, by Vera Velimeki. And it's this gorgeous garter. It's a dream in garter. It's just, it's a dream. Um, just look at it. And I think it has such a wearable shape. Let me just quickly show you. Super wearable. And you will not believe it. You only need three skeins of the Shetland Romney for this. Like only three skeins. Isn't that amazing? I think it's, I think that's fantastic. Um, I might need to make one of those as well. I'm just thinking. 
Um, so as I said, like you need three skeins, so three colorways. Um, Eula used the, um, just checking that this is the right side, yes. Um, Eula used the medium gray, which is this, and then the light beige and the gray brown. And you can see that even the two darker colors, so you can see that here, they have quite a lot of contrast. So that's, so that's really nice. So um, those would be these three colors together. Um, the medium gray, the light beige, and the gray brown. Um, so they work, they work really, really well. Um, if you want to have a slightly more colder variation, you can certainly substitute the light gray for the light beige. That works without a problem at all. Um, in terms of sort of contrast, you know, like you have one section that's striped. So if you are picking colors, I would recommend to pick like a high and low contrast for the stripes first and then pick the third color just according to your preference. Um, so yeah. So, I mean, you could also do this, right? Like do the stripes, for example, in these two, and then this is your third, if you want to have a lighter version. So this is very, this is very amazing, I think. I'm going to link to um, both the pattern itself and Eula's Revelry project page about this, but you need to um, sort of, you, need, you only need three skeins of the Shetland and Romney for that. So if you want to try that yarn, I think, I think this is great. And she said she even had leftovers. So if you then want to try the thing with the socks with it, that would be that would be fantastic as well, I think. Um, the other sample that Eula kind, kindly left me is the Highland Slipover by Hayley Smedley slash Ozetta, which I think is just fabulous. Just look at this. So it has this very, very beautiful shaping and gorgeous folded collar. I think I need one of these for, for the winter. I think I'm going to make one of these for the winter. Yeah. Um, and this is in the, in the Shetland Romney held double. So this creates a DK weight and I think it's a fabulous, it's a fabulous pattern and a fabulous sample. So yeah, super great. Um, for this one, um, Yule used 500 grams, so that's five skeins, five skeins held double. And I think it looks great. That's a size four. Look at the fabric. It's just such a nice fabric. That is the colorway light gray, by the way, that she used. So, so yeah, two patterns um, as inspiration for you, um, for you this beautiful yarns. Again, uh, the Shetland Romney will only be available until the end of the day on um, uh, on Thursday, July 20th. I will also link, if you want more pattern inspiration, to Eula's own video um, about this yarn, where she talks a bit more about the inspiration behind it, the spinning process. I always find that super fascinating. Like Eula makes great videos. And she also has lots of pattern recommendations. Um, in the video, also in the show notes down down below. So if you don't want to watch the video, but you kind of want to check out more, um, you know, more pattern suggestions, that's that's the way to go. Um, the last yarn is one that you know because we've had it in stock for a little while. It's also by a natural dyer. Um, her name is Emily Lim, and she goes by the brand name of Wool and Palette. And we carry her Rambouillet Merino fingering weight, which is a delightful, very round, very soft um, yarn that we used for socks, but would also be great for baby garments, would be great for shawls, would be great for garments. Um, and we added two new colorways um, to the shop just for a wedding wool weekend. And we have a lovely light green called pistachio and a bluish, like greenish blue 
called Seafoam. So those are in the shop now as well, and they're they're absolutely amazing. They're they're so beautiful, and like Emily's work is not available in Europe other than through us, I think. So if you want to try like a new net or not a new, she's not a new natural liar, but if you don't know about her work yet and you want to you know explore the world of natural dyes a little bit more, I highly recommend her work because it's absolutely amazing. She dyes most of her her yarns with plants that she's either foraged or grown herself uh, which i think is just fascinating and she has such a great knowledge about all things natural dyeing so yeah okay let me put away that yarn and grab this beauty That is the last section of our post wedding wool weekend shop update news section. Um, I'm going to show you Harriet's bags um, that we still have. So um, Harriet goes under the brand name of Wildwood Stitches, is based in Scotland and is the most delightful, sweetest person on earth. Uh, she's, she's really, she's so, so sweet. Um, she is also an incredible craftswoman, so she hand so she hand makes all of these. She sews all of these project bags, and she has an incredible eye for color. Um, so the project bags are always made up of a bottom of 100% wool Harris tweed, and then a cotton fabric for the upper part, and a different one. I'll show you in a second for the lining. She only uses cottons and soy bedding so there's no polyester in here um and you know like leather handles for the big ones so it's like yeah yeah they're just great they're amazing um we have two different prints uh, or had two different prints um this one is called bird and birds or i've called it bird and birds uh, i think it's just super sweet um, and the other one is called Summer Bees. I'll show you that in a second. This is the sweater size. So this very comfortably fits up to eight skeins of yarn or all of the other bags that I want to show you, which is what I thought was so fun. So we're just going to open it um, and I'm going to take them out and show them to you one by one. So um, we're going to go down in size. So this is the sweater bag. Then we also have the shawl bag, which has a standing bottom as well. And I'm gonna use this to show you the beautiful lining fabric, which also has cute little birds. By the way, on the weekend, a customer was a little bit hesitant about purchasing one of these because she said that um, with um, zipper bags, the yarn always catches for her. And I showed her the neat little trick that I like to do, which is when you're knitting with it, you just fold the top of the bag to the outside. And so the zipper is actually at the bottom and your yarn can't catch. And this doesn't do anything to the bag. Uh, I mean, the worst thing, but like, look, like it doesn't have like any folds or anything. If you get like a little crease or something and you wanna get rid of it, you just iron over it. Um, that's not a problem at all. So this is the this is the shawl size fits up to four to five skeins of yarn. Then we also have the sock size, which is great for socks or hats. It has a standing bottom, but it's slightly smaller. So just for you to compare. So yeah, that is shawl versus sock bag. And we have these cute notion pouches, which we didn't have before. So they don't have a standing bottom. Um, they have, yeah. All, all of them have the same, have the same lining. Um, we also have sweet little lavender sachets. So these come in packs of two um and uh, you you get like two different designs so you always get one where one side is the outside fabric and then one side is the inside fabric and the bottom is the Harris tweed and they're filled with organic french lavender so set of two um i'm going to talk a little bit about why we have those lavender sachets in a second um and i'm gonna show you the other prints. So this is Summer Beast. This is the Lavender Sachet and Summer Beast. And 
It has this beautiful warm caramel colored um, uh, Harris tweed. This is the Notions pouch in the Summer Bees. And this is the sweater bag, uh, not the sweater bag, sorry, uh, the shawl bag in Summer Bees. Um, I snatched the last sock bag of Summer Bees. And we sold out of the of the big like the sweater bags of summer bees. Um, there's also only one sweater bag at all left, which is this one. So if you want to have the um, the sweater bag, I would recommend you move rather quickly. What I really love about Harriet is that um, she made a change to the way that she works quite recently. Um, which is that she has find, found a way or developed a way to work almost zero waste with her fabric. So um, she's figured out how to cut a meter of fabric to get, um, to sort of use up, not sort of, to use up all of it, which is why um, we also now have the Notions pouches and the sweet little lavender sachets. And I think that is just fabulous because I'm all about, I mean, you know that I'm all about sustainability and reducing waste um, is a big part of it. So I was very, very happy when, when um, Harriet told me about this. Okay, that's, uh, those are all of the new things that are in the post shop, show shop update, post show shop update. Ugh. That's a difficult word, um, which is live now. Uh, so I hope that I hope that you find something that you like. Don't forget the Shetland Romney will only be in the shop for two days. So until Thursday, July 20th, end of day. So yeah, um, that's that. Okay. Um, next up, I want to talk about winter celebration boxes because they go on pre-order but they won't be for much long, longer. So same day that we're closing the Shetland Romney um, on July 20th will be the last day to pre-order your winter celebration box. This year's theme is cozy um, and I've curated a color palette of like warm neutrals and gold and dark green and I think it's gonna be really, really, really good. Um, if you're not familiar with our winter celebration box, Every year at the beginning of December, we um, do something that we call the winter celebration. It is 10 days of opening virtual doors. Uh, it's not religious, um, but kind of like similar in, in concept, like an admin calendar, where every day you open like a virtual door and there's something behind it. It can be a song, a recipe, a story, a discount code, anything like that. And last year, for the first time ever, we did um, a physical box to go with it. So one gift to open for every day of the winter celebration, inspired by a theme. And we're bringing it back this year. And as I said, this year the theme is cozy. Um, the exact contents of the box will be a surprise, but they're all for knitters. So it's, you know, like I curate them for knitters. And what I'm telling you is the yarn and the dyer because I'm super, super excited that we get to work with her. Um, I'm talking about Beth from Telling Yarns. So Telling Yarns is a small one woman show in the UK. Um, Beth only dyes on custom spun, non superwash all natural bases that are incredibly good. And she has a gift for color that is in, that is equally as as amazing. Um, she's one of the few natural dyers who very regularly does very variegated and speckled colorways, but in in sort of muted tones. And I think it's just gorgeous. Like she has so much depth and nuance to her work, and I completely fell in love with it when I first saw it. Um, I picked out a skein for myself, I think, at like the Unravel 2, like last year at some point, and um, it took me, I think, the better part of an hour to decide. Because every time that I was looking at like one of the colorways, A, one was more beautiful than the next, but then B, I was also just discovering so many new things about the colorways, and that was just absolutely amazing. So Beth is our featured dyer for this year's winter celebration box. And because we're working with Beth, 
we're able to give you the choice of, 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 of yarn base. So you can choose a fingering weight or a decay, or a decay weight. Um, I know that last year we went for just fingering weight and we had a lot of you who were like, okay, I don't really knit socks, I want something as well. So this year we're also offering the DK weight option. We only have a limited amount of them. So, you know, we're closing pre-orders on Thursday, July 20th, or when we sell out, uh, whatever comes first, um, because then Beth, Beth gets to dye all of the yarn. Yay! Okay, so that was winter celebration boxes. Oh my God, that's a lot today. <laughs> Because I also want to talk about the sock boxes. Um, so, you know that we have our Euro socks slash our quarterly sock boxes, right? We first launched them for October last year. So um, it will be a year in October that we've that we've started with our sock boxes, um, which I think is an excellent time to revisit and sort of adjust here and there. And that's exactly what we're doing with the sock boxes. So I love them and they're not going anywhere. And we're changing a couple of the things about them. Some based on your feedback, some based on my experience with curating them and my desire to sort of streamline things a little bit. Um, what is new? So from now on, the sock boxes will only be available as a subscription. What we did until now was it was always a time where we would open pre-orders and subscriptions for a sock box and then we would close them at a certain point and then we would, you know, ship them out and then do the same thing again. The problem with this is that it was really unpredictable how many boxes we would sell through pre-order every time. Um, and that's, not great in terms of process because I need to give the yarn dyers and the notion makers a certain, you know, heads up in terms of, you know, how much time do you have for dyeing, yada, yada, yada. And so sometimes we sold out of boxes super, super quickly and other times we didn't sell as, as much as I had anticipated. And um, that's why we're moving away from pre-orders to make sort of the box amount that the, or the amounts of yarn and the amounts of notions that we're ordering a little more predictable. So we're moving to a subscription only model. It's going to be a quarterly, a quarterly subscription. So there's no yearly subscription, pay, subscription option anymore. It's just quarterly. So that means, you know, every quarter you pay for, for a box. Um, for the next quarter's box, basically. You can pause or cancel at any point in time up until two months before the open date. So say, you know, you get the October box, the October box arrives with you at some point in September. Um, the official open date is October 1st. Um, and you decide, that's great, I love it. You know, I wanna get the next one as well. You just don't do anything. It's auto renewal. You get the you get the January box and you get the April box. You don't need to remember anything. If let's say then in April you're like, oof, the next one. I'm not entirely sure. You know, in the summer I don't really knit that much. I might want to skip the July box. Then you have until the first of May to hit pause on your July box. So that's not a problem at all if you want to cancel or, you know, pause because um, you can you can do both. You can do that up until two months before um, before the next box. Um, yeah, so that is one of the major changes. The second one, which I'm really excited about, is that we are going to offer two tiers of subscriptions. So we're going to have our sock boxes the same way that we did now, which is, you know, 100 gram skein of all natural non support sock yarn, then notions. So I'm expanding that it's, there will be stitch markers, but there might also be other things. And there's always going to be an extra gift. Um, but we're also introducing a subscription option that's called the sock skein, which is just the yarn. 
So if you don't want to have any of the add-ons, you know, of the, of the haberdashery items or of the gifts, then you can go for the sock skein only. Same thing, quarterly subscription, uh, but you get just the yarn. I think that's great because I, that is actually sort of a change that I'm making because of feedback from you, because, you know, um, I've heard loud and clear that there are a lot of you who also want an option that is either a little more affordable or who are like, I just have enough stitch markers and I don't need more notion pouches or things like that. I just want to have the yarn and I completely get that. So, so that's that. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at my, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at my cheat sheet here. Okay. So, um, what is not changing is the contents of the boxes will stay a surprise. So you'll know the makers, but the exact yarn, the exact colorway, all of that, that will stay a surprise. We'll do it as we did until now, which is I'm sharing the mood board and then you can decide, does the mood board speak to you? Like the colorways, all of that is always inspired by the mood board. So if you're like, ah, oh, the mood board is not really mine and you have a subscription, hit pause. Um, what we're doing as well is, because that's also something that I've heard from you, um, for those of you who don't like the surprise aspect of it, who want to know exactly what they're getting, um, we are doing, we are introducing a biannual sock shop update. So every April and every October, we're going to have an update with extras that I've ordered for the yarn and the notions that we had in the previous two boxes. So then you have a chance to, if you have a subscription, um, sort of get more yarn if you really like the colorway, or if you didn't have a subscription, but you and you wanted to wait until you saw the colorway, then you can wait and get some of that yarn in the sock shop update. So I hope that with those two sort of concepts with the sock skein and sock box subscription and the sock shop update, um, I can make all of you happy. Well, I can never make, make all of you happy. That's not, <laughs> and that's not what I strive for, but um, because that's just, it's, it's, it's not humanly possible to make every single person on this planet happy um, for one single person. But um, yeah, I hope, you know, I hope this is like a really good balance and like taking on your feedback over the last year, streamlining it a little bit for us, especially like in terms of the process, the streamlining is really the making it a subscription only and then having the twice a year, the sock shop update, which I'm really excited about. I'm really, really happy about it. Um, yeah. The first time that we're opening subscriptions um, for, for the sock skins and sock boxes will be on August 1st. And I'm really excited because we have some awesome makers for you in the October sock box. So on August 1st, the, the subscription option um, opens, you know, for the first time. And the first box that you're getting is the October box. And in the October box, we're featuring yarn from Julie from Black Eye Yarns and stitch markers from Terra Clay in the Netherlands. And they're amazing. So yeah. And there's obviously like in the box, an additional haberdashery item that I'm not talking about yet. But they're really good and I'm really excited about them. And I really, really hope that, you know, the sort of kind of refresh of the of the sock box slash sock skein um subscription is something that speaks to you as well speaking of speaking i'm done speaking i think <laughs> i think i've talked about everything let me just quickly double check it's probably also gone yeah it's probably also been one of the rather longer episodes but yeah we had a lot to get through because summer schedule only an episode per month so yeah um, next time there will be more knitting because I am going on vacation for a couple weeks. So there will hopefully be lots of knitting time. Let's see. And yeah, don't forget to shop the post show shop update. 
and um, get your winter celebration box pre-order in and keep your eye on your emails on August 1st for the sock box and sock skein subscriptions. And last but not least, if you subscribe to the magazine by July 31st, you get early access to all of our yards. If you don't want to have a subscription, issue 10 pre-orders are open now. And I'll see you again here in four weeks. Bye.